Ooh, what is up guys of course welcome back to another vpl wi-fi battle as you guys can see on the screen we have today green scrafty versus of course maiden dude or app uh, or i should say the chatanoga chestnut if i was actually saying that right versus the um, richard right on i'm pretty sure i'm saying that wrong <laughs> anyway as this is actually the first time we looked at maiden dude who of course was our first week vpl battler um he always gets himself in the strange games and games that are interesting so it's actually really interesting to this game alone mainly because both Greenscrafty and Dude are both as minus two in the losses here so the winner from this of course will come out with of course a bit of a more moral higher ground arrow feeling a bit more motivated clearly uh, it does that to a man two losses yeah that starts to definitely bearing down on you consider of course that both of these players are veteran players so they're definitely going all at it and they both need of course this win Look at Green Scrafted's team here. We have, of course, Necrosma, Krukajal, Lucario, Mega Venusaur, Saptos, and Float Seal. So, definitely a more interesting team. And definitely a Float Seal, I do believe, fits the bar. It gives, of course, Maiden Dude's team mainly because offensively it does kind of fret in most things around it. Then, of course, on Maiden Dude's side, we have Rodan Wash, Blissey, Hippowdon, and Mega Absol, uh, Crabominal, and, of course, Talonflame. So, First of all, the thing I want to say just straight on that is I'm really surprised Maiden Dude did not bring Crofagricus. I definitely believe a combination of Crofagricus and uh, Crofagricus damage and Crabominal would have been really, really scary with Trick Room in mind. But other than that, it looks the part. So without further ado, let's actually go, of course, into the game. I really hate how slow this is. I actually learned that this is a 41 turn battle. So I would not think that, consider offensively constructed these both teams are. So let's see. Starts off with my green. Uh, that, that's, that sounds about right. As he starts off with Rotom. So tough matchup from the get go. Looks about right, really. Let's see. Necrosma probably going to go for rocks here. As, of course, Rotom is going to outspeed, which means Necrosma most likely is not uh, speed EV in any fashion. Or it could be offensive Rotom. It did do a lot after all. So Talonflame comes in as Stealth Rocks hits the field. Um, good play from, of course, Ab, mainly because, of course, he doesn't have necessarily the greatest of defoggers, I believe, for this matchup, so it's a good opportunity to at least keep Gale Wing intact. So he's going to send in Zeus, which of course being Saptos. He's probably going to see a oh, Sword Stance. Scary. Sword Stance and most likely a Flare Blitz. Nice prediction. Very, very nice prediction. Then again, probably wasn't threatened that much from, of course, the Necrozma in the first place. So Flare Blitz, is it going to be enough? It is not. It is definitely not, but it did do a good chunk of damage, and while the Discharge will KO in return... Oh! Wakanberry! It's a Wakanberry! Oh! Oh, the clutch! The clutch! That's... Oh, that's, that's amazing. That's that's great. That's great, actually. Let's see, so probably another Flare Blitz here. Acrobatics is a risk. It goes for Roost, though. It goes for Roost. Well, it's not a bad option. I definitely wouldn't optimize for uh, for that. Oh, yeah, there we go. I would definitely have attacked there. Um, Flare Blitz, it's not a KO now. Ah, oh, what a missed opportunity. Ah, oh, what a missed opportunity to get rid of Zapdos. Oh, dear God. That's, un that's so unfortunate, too. Uh, so it goes for Elastic Tailwind. Oh, okay, okay. That's... It's not a bad combination, per se. But making Saptos health begin, yeah, that's dangerous. That's really dangerous. As, of course, the Eternal Flame is going to fall. Ah, oh, the series of plays are so unfortunate there. That's so unfortunate. Definitely felt that Ab had already green scrafted, of course, against the wall, and then Saptos got back. Let's see, Frankie and Tailwind. Yeah, this, this could be interesting. Let's see, are we going to see a power-up punch here? Oh, we're going to see C-move. Oh. It's the IC move. I have no idea. Sub Zero Slam or something like that. Look at that. Crabominal is pissed. He is really pissed. <laughs> and this is definitely going to be a KO. So I guess, you know, we lose some, we give some. But that's definitely helpful. Um, reason this is a KO is because it is a Crabominal. It hurts. It might not be speedy. It might not be the most bulky thing. My god, does it hurt. So my grain is going to come in again. And uh, Ice Hammer might very well be close to a KO here. And not gonna risk it though. Interesting. 
as we're going to see Moonshot of Absol. Hmm. For all the predicting Psychic, if so, that's an excellent play. Moonlight, even. Alright. So we're probably going to see Knock Up here. Knock Up is not going to be a KO. I wonder if if Greenscraft has a Dazzling Gleam on this. Um, actually, withdraws Moonshot. Hmm. To bless me, to blissy. Right? Yeah. As we are gonna see what now? X Sister, actually. Now that's new. That's most certainly new. You see the movement of Necrozma? It's like he jumped up with his hand, like boom! <laughs> no, table Peter out. So I guess like a fair exchange of course. Saptos fall and all. So he's gonna switch up Mangrave, most likely not being able to do anything. As Sobek is gonna come in, which of course is a crook jail. Literally not Moxie for this matchup. Let's see. And there's a Stealth Rock. Most likely Stealth Rocks are here to stay now, since of course Saptos just did fall. So, very, very interesting turn of events. Now, I wonder whether or not if he has counter on this. No, he's switching out. Did not see Pursuit. Goes to Madame Madar, which of course is the mighty, mighty Powdon. And if Powdon can definitely take a knockoff safely here as he goes for an Earthquake. That shouldn't be too dangerous. That shouldn't be too dangerous at all. Yeah, that's that's a problem for you. It just never dies. It just never dies. Hmm. So we're actually our 11 turns in. And as stated, this is a 41 turn battle. So I have my honest idea what could have happened. So anyway, Mega Venusaur is going to come in. As we we're going to see possible Toxic. No, Earthquake. Direct to Earthquake. Now, Mega Venusaur is definitely annoying for. Did a good chunk of damage with that earthquake, though. Um, anyway, Mega Venusaur is definitely annoying for. Um, Maiden Dude to actually deal with. I definitely believe that Ab don't necessarily have the, the strength to pull this off. As he's gonna send in Frankie. Hopefully, Frankie does take a sludge bomb here and are able to retaliate, though it's very unlikely to will out speed. Damn, losing talent flame that early could have been very, very unfortunate. That could definitely have been very unfortunate. As there's a Giga Drain, that's probably going to push it down. And next Giga Drain is definitely going to kill. It's I see it's very unlikely that it, would, it will be able to outspeed. Um, let's see if Rude is going to... Yeah, he goes for it. It's very unlikely that he would have had enough speed to, of course, risk all the offense up with it. So that's where Frankie falls, which is unfortunate, but here comes the Moonchild. So we're probably going to see a Sword Stance variant here. Um, I do believe he needs to go for a Sword Stance to be able to kill with, of course, a Psycho Cutter like that. If he carries that, he could also carry the likes of Flamethrower, but then again, we have the Fixed Pad, of course, Mega Absol. Or not Mega Absol, on Mega Venusaur. Let's see. Sword Stance, Sword Stance, Sword Stance. No! No! He probably didn't have Swords then. Let's see, Sludge Bomb. Oh, it was a KO! My mistake. Freaking KO from that range. Wow. So, Mega Venusaur is now the danger everybody did not want to deal with. This is this is horrible. This is rough. Is he going to go for Hydro Pump directly? Hmm. Bit surprised there. Eh? Bit surprised. And again, doesn't have necessarily the movement to pull this off. Hmm, I wonder. I really, really, really are wondering. What could Ab be thinking? He's gonna switch out, right? So he's back on track, clearly, as he goes to Oh Bless Me, which of course being a blissy. Uh, and as stated, I think I had an idea why this battle turned out to be this long. And it probably is because of this. It most likely is because of this. I don't think Rude has the has the has the um, offense to actually take out the Blissy properly. He has to switch out going to offensive with Pokemon. So I'm going to Krug though. Here we go. Here comes Sawback, and we're gonna see what now. Because I mean, we are free for five. We're twenty turns in. There's a seismic sauce. All right. That's not going to do a whole lot. We're going to do 50, clearly. Um, <laughs> hmm. I'm actually a bit curious. I actually do wonder what did transpire here. As he's going to withdraw, oh, bless me, probably going to go back to... Nope, Madame Adar. So he has 
He has bulky shit left. Man dude has bulky shit left and bulky shit alone. I wonder. I really, really, really are wondering. He's gonna go for a taunt, right? Nice. As we are not gonna see Whirlwind, I guess, or Slack off. Slack off, clearly. Um, he's gonna switch out Madamadar. Probably gonna go to Hydro Dramatics. There we go. There's the Rotom. Did he go for an earthquake or knockoff? That's the question. That is the question. It's the earthquake. Ah. Too bad, Rudy. Too bad. You really had an opportunity there just pulling the knockoff. As. Hmm. Could Hydro Punk KO? It most likely will. This. This is most likely the reason the battle turned out to be as linked as this. Because I don't believe Rudy has a way to stop. Soft boil and slack off stalling from Blissey and Proudon. Um let's see, is this gonna keep going for hydro pumps? It is it is a scarf. It is scarfed. My god, I didn't even think about that for a second. Just so gonna go for a nasty plot, clearly not out speeding. Um Oh shit. Vacuum wave? Yeah, that's that's where it goes. That's not gonna kill though. So we have now a Rotom that is just pulling through out of nowhere. Oh, it almost sucks. It almost sucks for Rudy knowing he just could have sent in his Mega Venusaur, which clearly is his option now to do. Now, I think the worst reason here is that we now know that Rudy has no way of, of course, um, being able to go for something like Leech Seed, Toxic against this thing. He needs to hold for a sludge probably as a possible poison and whittle it down by that. And that's gonna be a slow ride. And I'm pretty sure that's the slow ride we're looking at right now. Because I don't I don't think I don't think Green Scrapty has anything to be able to stop this from happening. He he will eventually win win. I will give you guys this. I will actually give you guys the result. Rudy does win eventually. I do believe he wins 2-0. But Maiden Dude did go for a, a series of soft boils and slack offs to be able to deal with Rudy's offenses. I'm actually gonna wrap the game up here, mainly because we actually have 16 turns left, and I'm pretty sure I know how those will look like. Something like soft boil versus Giga Rain and Seismic Toss, etc. etc. It's gonna be a slow loss, but yeah, it's basically what the game boils down to is that both like the offensive to kill each other off, and of course. The main opening for that is, of course, that Rodan was scarfed. That's a big issue. Um, definitely taking on Lucario without a problem. And came out of nowhere, which was awesome. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to stop it here. So, right, guys, thank you, of course, so much for watching. And uh, hope you guys enjoyed that game. As stated, um, I think the first series of plays here is the biggest ones. And that is that the missing out on Talon Flame, when, of course... He would have been forced to lose Talon Flame, which clearly is against Bird Zapdos anyway. Uh, but I think it could have been better off not being forced to go for Tailwind and then go for the, any optimal play from Kibra Abominal. Uh, and then, of course, um, has been stated that Mega Absol did not get the opening in need of this matchup. And just overall, Rudy did look really well at that end there. Uh, he definitely could, with his defensive Pokemon, survive. Uh, Maiden Dude's defensive Pokemon, but it's a slow ride, and they're both it was very clear that both offensive sides of the battle did not have the necessarily offensive to be able to deal with the defensive from each other's team, so it was definitely an interesting match. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this game, and I'll see you guys, of course, in the next video. Until then, of course, take care. Bye.